This Week in Politics on KSFY. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Allen. For more than two years, I have pursued an interview with the 42nd Vice President of the United States, Walter Mondale. A week and a half ago, that interview happened, and tonight we're going to bring you two interesting portions of that interview that deal with two South Dakota natives. Coming up, we'll talk about Mondale's relationship with former South Dakota Senator George McGovern. But we begin with Mondale's close friendship with another former Vice President, Hubert Humphrey. While he represented Minnesota in the U.S. Senate before becoming Vice President, Humphrey was born in Wallace, South Dakota, and spent some of his early years in Huron. Humphrey was the Democratic nominee for President in 1968, eventually losing to Republican Richard Nixon. I think he would have been a great president. Do I know? No, but I think so. Walter Mondale's step into American politics wouldn't have happened the way it did if not for Hubert Humphrey. In 1964, Humphrey was elected vice president on the Democratic ticket with Lyndon Johnson. It was Walter Mondale, at the time Minnesota Attorney General, who was appointed to fill out Humphrey's term in the Senate. Now, more than 50 years later, Mondale says his friend Humphrey suffered as a result of leaving the Senate and accepting Johnson's invitation to be VP. I was a friend of Humphrey's all during that time. I think Humphrey would have been far better to have stayed in the Senate and not gone up there because he lost his, his position of authority in government. And uh, Johnson, I don't know what explains it, but Johnson was uh, very dismissive, sometimes outright uh, abusive. Mondale says Lyndon Johnson essentially bullied Humphrey throughout Humphrey's time as vice president. Mondale remembers one incident in particular that sticks with him to this day. I remember being at a reception for a certain class of senators, and there was Johnson talking to us, and there were about five or six of us there, and Humphrey was there, and he said, you know, one of the things I got to say about Humphrey, and I really mean this, I thought, here, well, here comes a compliment. And he said in a downer, he's okay. It embarrassed Humphrey, Mondale says, and he was embarrassed too. I know Humphrey, I could feel it, uh, how it, it hit him. And Johnson just couldn't help himself. He just had to do that. Part of what may explain this, a memo Humphrey sent to Johnson in February of 1965, soon after becoming vice president. In that memo, Humphrey outlined 11 points that argued against expanding the Vietnam War and making an argument for ending that conflict sooner rather than later. When Johnson received that memo from Humphrey, Mondale says Humphrey was essentially locked out of the decision-making process at the White House. Because Humphrey wrote that memo, Johnson cut him off. And he, I don't think he was welcome at the cabinet meetings. I don't think he uh, was invited ever to the White House uh, to do what, at least what vice presidents do. The important points of that Humphrey memo, that America would not long support a war against a country that had not declared a war against the U.S., and that America would turn against Johnson if he escalated the war. If Johnson had responded to this memo, and it had been an entirely different story. Johnson did escalate the war and saw his support at home weaken to such an extent that on March 31st, 1968, he told the nation, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. I think Johnson was just mad because the guy that worked for him had been critical of those policies that Johnson pursued. But he was dead right in that memo, ahead of his time again. A lot of things we forget about Humphrey, he was a brilliant guy. Hubert Humphrey died of cancer in January of 1978. He's been gone now for 40 years. He was like a father to me. And Mondale says he would not be who he is now if he hadn't known Humphrey all those years ago. I will never forget what he meant to me. It was great, wonderful, special. I was very, very fortunate to have a Hubert Humphrey in my life. I asked Walter Mondale, how often does he think about his friend? All the time, because he, he, you know, he was a, he helped me, he helped me learn how to think about public affairs. And every time I think about affairs, sooner or later I get back to what Humphrey told me about. 